Hi, everyone. I'm Laura Papetti, and thank you for being with us on Creme 2 News at Noon. Jen York is on assignment today. We're going to lead off today with a look outside as we begin our day with a lot of rain, some cloud cover out there. The question is now, what can we end our day with as we head into the afternoon hours? Evan Narani is standing by. He is live at his home with the very latest. And Evan, my Izzy, my daughter, is outside right now racing sticks down the gutter because that's what the weather is good for at this point. <laughs> That's absolutely right. And that probably could be what she can continue doing for the rest of the day because there's not much relief in sight for the day today. It looks like it's just going to be a rainy day uh, for most of it. We do have a good chance that some of those showers are actually going to intensify for most of eastern Washington and north Idaho uh, as today could bring totals upwards of an inch in some spots of the region. Keep in mind, an inch is what we've seen so far this month in Spokane. So we've already picked up on an inch so far, but we could pick up on additional inch just today uh, with the amount that's expected to come down between uh, about now and your early Thursday morning. So take a look at your totals. Areas in purple are the areas that are going to be seeing the heaviest amounts of precipitation. Uh, some spots like Sandpoint are seeing the chance of maybe two inches of rain. Now, this doesn't mean we're guaranteed to see these numbers. In fact, these are probably pretty hefty estimates, uh, but still any amount of precipitation adds on to the totals that we've already seen on our area, uh, rivers and streams, which is why we see flood warnings and flood watches in effect right now. Those are uh, through the North Idaho Panhandle, the southeast corner of Washington, and uh, one flood warning up toward the Okanagan River. There's also one now down around the Walla Walla region. So we're seeing some of these watches turn into warnings and some of those warnings even turning into advisories. But right now, no advisories for our region. A wind advisory, though, is in effect. That is thanks to the expectation of uh, wind to be increasing to the 40 to 50 mile per hour range. So it's going to be uh, very breezy after about the 2 p.m. hour. This is satellite radar right now. You can see a lot of activity on there. Plenty of areas of yellow and orange indicating moderate to heavy downpours of rain at times. So all in all, plenty of activity to carry on through the rest of the day. We'll have more details on what this looks like coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Evan, thank you very much. We'll check in with you in just a few moments. Taking a look at the top headlines for today, nearly 400,000 people requested absentee ballots in Idaho for the state primary. Now, this is the first time voting in Idaho done by mail, all mail, due to the coronavirus. Idaho Secretary of State's office is stressing voters need to return their ballots on time. Absentee ballots are due back at local clerk's office by 8 o'clock on June 2nd. That's 8 o'clock in the evening on June 2nd. A sixth resident at the Spokane Veterans Home has recovered from the coronavirus. Now, while this patient recovered, experts say the virus did take a toll on their health. This recovery is following the death of another resident earlier this week, and that brings the death toll at the home, the Spokane Veterans Home, to 10. Experts say the patients died after testing positive for the virus or potentially due to other conditions present during that diagnosis. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention released a 60-page roadmap for reopening for states, coming as Connecticut becomes the 50th state to allow some non-essential businesses to open. Now, the CDC's new guidelines includes recommendations. Uh, restaurants install barriers as one of them. Buses close some seats and school close playgrounds and encourage students to wear masks. So again, a 60-page document, uh, much information, but those are a few of the items that are mentioned in that roadmap for reopening. Local leaders say Spokane County could enter phase two of reopening just in time for the long holiday weekend that will be approaching. Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward says she is confident. Now, just yesterday, Governor Jay Inslee announced some new guidelines for that reopening and that second phase. Take a listen. This obviously is happily going to allow more economic opportunity for states that uh, uh, can qualify while still really providing the protections we need for the health of our citizens. The governor added counties will have to say how much they can be open during phase two and local leaders will decide if businesses can indeed reopen or if it is just a portion of those businesses. So still much uh, more information coming about reopening in phase two. Here is the criteria for larger counties to reopen in Washington state. Counties with fewer than 10 cases per 100,000 people in a two-week span can apply for that phase. Governor Inslee says Spokane County does indeed fall into that category. 
The application criteria still includes a recommendation from the local health officer, hospital bed counts, and a vote from the local Board of Health and County Commissioners as well. Spokane County already submitted that last week. Following the new criteria, the county also had to submit information about testing data, contact tracing, and the local ability to investigate if there are indeed some breakouts in the area. Now, more counties are eligible to apply for Phase 2 of the state reopening plan as this new information came down. The counties highlighted in orange on our screen are eligible to enter Phase 2. It does include Adams and Spokane County in eastern Washington, and counties in yellow are already indeed in Phase 2. And under Phase 2, gatherings of five people or fewer are indeed allowed. Restaurants can also open at 50% capacity, which of course um, is a huge difference from what they're dealing with at this point. Across state line, Idaho is currently in phase two of its reopening plan. It does allow restaurants, hair and nail salons, and gyms to reopen. However, they have to meet health and safety protocols that have been set for. Stage three in Idaho is set to begin at the end of the month, and during that stage, gatherings of 10 to 50 people would be allowed. Well, for restaurants that have been operating and just a fraction of their output trying to, to stay um, alive and well as they can during coronavirus and provide takeout. Moving on to phase two, while that may allow them to have uh, more business, that also does present some very new challenges for them. So how quickly can some of them get back up and running? Let's take a look. Adam Hegstead runs the Eat Good Group with nearly a dozen restaurants in the Inland Northwest. Since the stay-home order, those restaurants have been operating on pure takeout, a massive loss in revenue that forced a series of layoffs. But soon, they could be allowed to open at 50% capacity. For many business owners, that's the light at the end of the tunnel. Right now, we're pretty positive because we've survived through takeout and delivery phase. I mean, we stopped the bleeding. Even before this announcement, preparations began about two weeks ago, anticipating a possible June 1st reopening. We took a little bit of a break and were able to reset the restaurants, you know, really deep clean, get everything spotless in there. But depending on how quickly the variance process goes, it could be sooner than June 1st. Hegstead says regardless, they'll be ready to open and be ready for the new order of things. Make sure we have masks on hand and gloves, uh, everything we can to try and ensure that we're not passing on, you know, any kind of um, sicknesses to anyone and we're not getting ourselves. But preparations go beyond health and safety. It's like opening a brand new restaurant. I mean, that's essentially what we're doing is we're taking our current operation and opening up a brand new restaurant again. The restaurants will now have to start reaching out to laid off employees to bring them back and reestablishing supply chains so they have enough inventory to serve the returning customers. We're going to add um, a lot of the more favorite items back on, uh, have a little bit bigger of a variety on the menus. And uh, so we got to get all those items prepped up. We got to get our uh, bar menus and bar cocktail programs up and running again, um, all our inventory levels back up. Of course, part of the challenge is the uncertainty, not knowing how many customers will even come back right away. But naturally, business owners would rather face that uncertainty than the uncertainty of knowing whether they'll ever open their doors again. In Spokane, Casey Decker, Krem 2 News.